Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red to Com video, we're going to be going through the tech news over the past 24 or so hours, or at least a couple of the more interesting stories. So this video is going to focus on two particular topics, the first being DRAM and NAND prices and shortages, and the fact that supply is only going to become bountiful in 2018, and then we're going to switch to RX Vega, specifically on power requirements that MSI have let slip, specifically an employee of MSI on a forum. But first things first, let's talk about DRAM, shall we? A couple of years ago, DRAM prices were pretty decent, but not so much over the past, let's say, 12 months or so. In fact, over the second quarter of 2017, DRAM prices climbed around 12 to 13-ish percent, and that's according to TrendForce. So what does that mean? Well, basically prices have increased and not for additional speed or quantity, but just because. And the reasons primarily for this, well, there's an abundance of reasons. Essentially, it's, and I hate to use the term, but a perfect storm. Some of them, some of these reasons are because of smartphones. So back, let's say three, four years ago, even a couple of years ago, smartphones didn't have such an abundance of memory. Now, while I wouldn't exactly say 6 gigabytes is common or anything like that, it is becoming increasingly normal, especially for higher-end devices, tablets, that type of thing. So, A, there's that. B, this is being tied in with iPhone 8. So, not only do you have iPhone 8 being, well, let's just put it this way, Apple devices are always popular, but smartphones in general, tablets even lower you know, lower end devices that even have just, I don't know, a gigabyte of memory or what have you, they still are eating up memory supply. The other is that PC markets are having a resurgence. You've got the Xbox One X, the PlayStation 4 Pro, the PlayStation 4, the, you know, the original Xbox, um, and you've got, of course, the, the Switch. All of these consoles eat up memory. And the other big one is GPUs. Now, GPUs are used for numerous things from data centers and of course pushing pixels on screen but what's really hurting things at the moment is crypto mining with Nvidia and AMD GPUs being bought bountifully plentifully for the purposes of mining those precious bitcoins. AMD and mining have long had a history together but NVIDIA are now getting in on the act, and we've heard, of course, Pascal GPUs being specifically designed for this purpose, and AMD are doing much the same. The answer, of course, lies in the heart of battle. No, it doesn't, really. You step aside, Ryu. Instead, it lies very simply in additional factories, because let's face it, demand slash, well, you know, need for this stuff, never mind demand, but just pure need for it, is not going to be going anytime soon. Therefore, additional manufacturing must be, uh, well, taken, uh, well, that was the worst sentence ever, but basically additional manufacturing is required. Therefore, Samsung, SK Hynix, and, you know, the other usuals are starting to produce more factories and starting to do the initial groundwork for this. Unfortunately, it's not like you're playing Command & Conquer. These things take a while to actually build, set up, test, and blah, 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 blah. Therefore, according to routers, at least, who are reporting this, it's not going to start really becoming normal until 2018 for those uh, factories to really, well, make any difference at all, for them to actually be part of the food chain. So basically, in the short term, we are pretty screwed. Insert meme of Scotty saying we need more power, because now MSI, specifically, and more accurately, not MSI um, themselves, but rather an employee of MSI, their marketing director, has revealed on the Tweakers forum, well, I'll read out the quote verbatim. I've seen the specs of Vega RX. It needs a damn lot of power. We're working on it, which is to start, so launch is coming closer. That is translated from Dutch, and basically I grabbed that from videocards.com, the translation, although to be fair, I could have asked a couple of Dutch friends as well, but would have led to much the same thing, but that actually involves me loading up Facebook, and it would have been a whole thing. Anyhow, um, so for those who do not know, 
RX Vega is scheduled to, to launch mm, basically July, maybe August time, although the abundance of supply is down to your imagination. But in terms of power consumption, we have the Frontier Edition. So they actually have a couple of different SKUs. One is air-cooled, which has 300 watts. The second is liquid, which is 375. We can probably make a guesstimate, yes, the technical terminal, that RX Vega is going to be around the same amount of power consumption. Now, we can guess this for a couple of reasons. One, NVIDIA obviously have Pascal, for example, the GTX 1080 and the 1080 Ti. And it wasn't too long ago, a few days ago, that we covered another rumor slash leak slash whatever you want to call it, that accordingly... RX Vega is going to be, well, basically is showing to be roughly on par with a 1080, or actually, no, sorry, faster than a 1080. Let me, let me recount, it was actually faster than a 1080. Unfortunately, there is some ambiguity there, because what is faster than a 1080? For example, if you have a snail, and you are running a cheetah against the snail, the cheetah is faster than the snail, obviously, but it's a hell of a lot faster than a snail. So, faster doesn't really give you any indication. It could also be that you have one cheetah racing against another cheetah, and the one cheetah is like one-tenth of a second faster across the finishing line. The other problem is that we don't know with SKU in the Vega lineup it was actually facing off against the GTX 1080, because there are two, and one of them obviously has higher specifications. It's going to cost more money. So my question is, is it the lower end SKU, which is faster than the 1080, or is it the higher end SKU, which is faster than the 1080? If it's the higher end SKU, which is faster than the 1080, does that mean it's faster than the 1080, but it's not faster than the 1080 tie? Unfortunately, once again, we don't know. Frankly, it's going to require reviews or an abundance of reviews, because quite honestly, one or two leaks of benchmarks, they'll be great, they'll be a good in, early indicator of the performance, of course, and I look forward to them appearing, because let's face it, they will, but being honest, it needs a plethora of reviews, and quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Vega gets faster like one to two months after launch, this is exactly what happened with Claris, uh, for example, when the 1060 launched, if you look at the reviews that... Uh, that were comparing the 1060 against RX 480 at around the time the 1060 launched, the 1060 was actually faster. Fast forward a couple of months and the RX 480 actually started to gain a lot of ground. Now, obviously, the 1060 still won in certain benchmarks, but the 480 did do a lot better. Some would argue that AMD should have perhaps waited a couple of more weeks and just waited to the sorry waited on the drivers becoming more mature but well that is what it is obviously they just wanted to sell the cards which is fair enough regardless this is very normal in computing it happens with pascal the early performance of directx 12 is not exactly been stellar with pascal nevertheless performance has definitely improved for example if we were to take oh i don't know rise of the tomb raider uh, this is at 4K on GTX 1080. Performance on launch was around 20 frames per second. I refuse to to mention the 0.5s and 0.2s in this particular video. And then went up to 27 frames per second. Not exactly 30 FPS locked, but much more pliable. And you could certainly do, let's say, 1440p or perhaps an interim resolution very happily if you're willing to do, once again, 30-ish uh, FPS. Hitman went from 50 to 60 FPS, definitely a good thing. Ashes of Singularity, 46 to 50. The Division, 31 to 32. So that's pretty quaint, not exactly a big deal. And very similar performance gains for Gears of War as well, around 10%. Now I grant you that's not huge, but if, for example, Vega turns out to be, oh, I don't know, let's shoot a rough guess, a few percent slower than the 1080 tie. I'm saying worst case scenario. It could end up being a couple of percent faster than the 1080 tie. On the other hand, we just don't know. And really, it's going to come down to the number of compute units, the boost clocks, the GPU, uh, sorry, the uh, memory clocks, whether it's going to have an aggressive, uh, I guess, boost frequency, and just the other usual crap which really comes into a GPU. Hopefully it's very fast and we have many shiners because that means we essentially have a new champion 
That's good. NVIDIA will then possibly release Volta, which possibly will then say to AMD, hey, you might want to start cutting those prices of Vega. Who knows? Maybe AMD already have Vega 2.0. After all, there were leaks that AMD had already a roadmap for a new version of Vega, but there hasn't really been so much movement on that, so it's possible that that's just a load of bullshit now, and it's not going to happen. Anyway, with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Normal stuff. If you want to subscribe, well, by all means, click the button, and, uh, well, like the video. Take care.